if you did. It's a great turnout, man. A lot of beautiful people in this city. I know beautiful my own brother. I'm proud of you. 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 Thank y'all, thank y'all for coming out. Like the brother said, glad y'all came out. Uh, my name is Kellen. For y'all, for those of y'all who don't know me, uh, y'all might know me on Facebook. It's by the name of uh, or Anomalous now, or whatever. But outside of Facebook, I'm just Kellen. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I was a mentor and tutor for uh, God and Life Church. I did a little stand there for about a year. Uh, I also did some mentoring and tutoring in uh, We Know the Neighborhood with a group called Conversation Camp. Uh, good brother Martez that used to work with me in here right now. Uh, right now, I'm currently working with Zone, uh, with One House. We're doing things in the community. Uh, I want to invite y'all to our next some of our next couple of gatherings and events and some of y'all can check it out and see how we operate i don't think it's kind of like anything else that's going on in birmingham right now um without with that said i just go into the lecture right quick um knowledge itself what is knowledge itself uh what is its purpose and how can it be used as a tool for our liberation uh how many of y'all asked y'all itself that question like what is knowledge itself what is dude going to talk about um, I'm going to get into all that. Let me ask y'all a question real quick. How many of y'all have seen the movie Friday? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of y'all seen the movie uh, Forrest Gump? Okay. Now, if I said to y'all Forrest Gump, the movie Forrest Gump was just like Friday, what would y'all say? Y'all seen both of the movies, right? Y'all probably say, no, nah, what this dude talking about? No, nah, how can I make that claim, right? I mean, besides it being the movie, the plot is different, the characters are different, the place where it's set is different, the movies just aren't alike at all, right? But you would be able to say that because you are in possession of the details about the movies, right? Okay, so all the major religions on the planet today all of them make the same type of claim that man is made in the likeness of god right let us make man land and i am right so we made in the image and the likeness of god so in order to substantiate that claim right we need to be in possession of the details of the attributes of man that are essential to man right and the attributes of god well that makes sense so in order to do that right we need to be kind of scientific in our approach because we don't want to make the mistake of uh attributing things to god that really don't make sense things like a vengeful god or a wrathful god like that kind of would make sense why would he be vengeful and wrathful against his own creation right so um that is what knowledge itself is it's the understanding of those qualities that make man like god um the reason why we need to make sure those qualities are essential to man's nature is because, like I said, we don't want to attribute things that aren't really qualities in our behavior. It's more like uh, frailties or, or something that needs to be like overcome in that process of understanding what makes us like uh, things like uh, anger, stuff like that, and, and being tense. Y'all know every time you do something in response out of anger and tense and your tense and frustration, right, you lose about 30 to 50 points off of your IQ, right? Now that's kind of dangerous because there's some of us that really don't need to lose no more, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Points off our IQ, I mean, just being honest. So I mean, like, just being real, there's some folks out there that's quite, you know, emotional and stupid and murderous and, you know, just hard to deal with and nasty, you know what I'm saying? So we don't, at the same time, those same type of people also possess a divine nature, right? They are capable of love and compassion and stuff like that, right? So we need to separate what's essential to man's behavior and what's not and compare that to God, right? What do we see when we look at God? What do we see when we look at man, right? So in order to do this and make this scientific, because, I mean, spirituality is really a science, right? We need... Uh, uh, accurate nomenclature, a proper uh, labeling system, like, uh, for example, like music, 
like you play piano, right? You can't play the piano unless you know the court, the, the keys, right? You need something to identify the keys with. Same thing with like uh, uh, chemistry. Like you can't practice chemistry without the periodic table. You know what I mean? You classify the elements from you know, positive, negative, negative lowest atomic weight, heaviest atomic weight, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. So you need a specific labeling system to identify the elements that you're dealing with, right? When we talk about spirituality, we need to apply the same concept. So uh, let's get into it. Um, the word that we use to express uh, the entirety of, of who we are, of what a man is. And by the way, when I say man, when y'all hear me say the word man, I'm not talking about mythical man, astrological man, hypothetical man, nothing like I'm talking about y'all sitting and me sitting in this room right now, right? Okay. And also I'm talking about man, woman, and child. So the word that we use to uh, encompass the entirety of our, of our nature, who we are, what we are, is the word being, right? Can y'all see that? Right. I hate to turn my back on y'all, but I need to use the board or whatever. But um, that word being, right, it applies to us. We call ourselves human beings, right? That word can also be applied to God, right? We call God the supreme being. You follow what I'm saying? Right? Okay. Uh, let me also pause and back up. The uh, title and the process of knowledge itself, right? That theme really came out of ancient Kemet. And we, uh, of course, Brother Zone got the shirts, the knowledge of self clothing. Uh, we theme this lecture around Kemet, and we call it Kemet because that's the original name for uh, the land they call Egypt now. Uh, the thing about Kemet, I get a lot of people asking me this like, why do people stay stuck on Kemet? Kemet is not to be like, it's to be looked at, it's like a lighthouse. So I think John Z. Jackson uh, said, if you want to study African history, you got to begin with ancient Kemet. Don't get stuck there, though. Like, Kemet is like, a, Africa is like a house with a real dope anterior room. Like, the anterior room is like the first room you see before you see the rest of the house. The point of the anterior room is to make you want to see the rest of the house, right? So you got to treat Kemet like that. Start there, but don't end it. You know what I'm saying? That, the reason why that's being is because Kemet is the the apex of the majority of Af African culture. Say it again now. Basically, to where, where, where we get our modern religion from. Uh, and, you know, we're going to get into that. Uh, but yeah, the spiritual systems or whatever. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, knowledge of self, the beginning of the understanding of that, those qualities. In ancient Kemet, you know, they had the mystery system. They call that the, the opening of the way. The beginning of understanding what knowledge itself is, is called the opening of the way, right? So back to what I was saying about being. We got human beings, we got the supreme being, right? Okay. Another word that we could use for being, right? We talk about one being, we talk about one individual, right? I got to skew my hand. Can y'all see that? Can y'all make that up? All right. Are y'all remember liking y'all? Okay. Okay. That word being is synonymous. I mean, individual is synonymous with being when we talk about one person. And we can also say one God, right? One individual God. Individual means one, right? Okay. But look at what that word is made out of. Individual is a compound word, right? It's made up of the word indivisible I'll write this to the side okay. can I pick it up okay okay so I'll, I'll write this out
All right. I can say that word individual is made up of indivisible plus dual. Right? You see that, right? So that word is indicative. It indicates two entities, two realities that are united. They cannot be divided, right? That's what makes up an individual. So individual, I'm sorry. So let's get into that. Right? I mean, everything in creation is dual. Right? I mean, zone, do me a favor. Can you uh, read? The, it's a quote in a cabal. It's a book that's supposed to be written by three initiates from the Egyptian mystery system. There's a book out about it. And they have a quote about the law of reality. And, get, can you read that and by the way, if I uh, call you, call or ask you for something, all I ask you to do is stand up and say, My name is XYZ. I am followed by I. And the reason why I'm doing it. Name, my name is XYZ. I am is that the What do you do? Who you are? Just real quick. The law of duality. Just so y'all won't. I'm going to show y'all duality somewhere else too. You might not think to look. I mean, think about it. If one, if something exists, it has to have one one side and then another side, right? I mean, look at one day. Day consists of day, time, and nighttime. Twelve light time hours, twelve night time hours, right? I mean, you got one nose, two nostrils. You have two hand, one set of hands. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Complementary opposite within all. I said, so when we're talking about an individual, we're talking about two entities that are one and cannot be divided because everything being is dual. So, with that said, we know existence, right? Everything that exists, one side of it consists of what we call energy and matter, right? We know that for a fact. We can put our hands on it, we can bump into stuff, we can feel the energy of some crowd when we walk into the room. We know there's energy and matter, right? The other side of that, we just heard the opposites. The, the duality law, right? The other side, if one side is made up of energy and matter, the other side has to be non energy and non matter, right? That makes sense? Right? This non matter, non energy entity is what we call. Consciousness. Hello, y'all. Where All right, consciousness, right? And it is consciousness is what we call the self, right? Now, if you think about that, right, why would you call consciousness itself, right? Well, just first of all, 
Boy, I won't play. Bro, stand up and take it. What's this? I say, I say, what is consciousness? What is consciousness doing in the message? Okay, this is a good answer. Consciousness is simply awareness, right? Consciousness is just to be awake, to be aware of something. So consciousness is that which is aware, right? It is also that which no, because I mean, you can't have knowledge without consciousness. Because knowledge is a function of perception. Perception is a function of awareness. You have what they call uh, awareness or, or perception without recognition, because consciousness is also that which recognizes, right? Right. That was recognized. So you have perception without recognition. And we call that ignorance. Ignorance means no knowledge, lack of knowledge. We also, okay, when recognition takes place with perception, we have knowledge. Because you recognize what you're perceiving. That's, you know what you're dealing with, right? Follow what I'm saying? Okay, so consciousness is that which is aware of that, it which knows that which recognizes. It is also, I need more space. Consciousness is also that which we. The reason why I wrote it like that is because consciousness is the receptive side of the self. Will is the active aspect of the self. You follow what I'm saying? You with me? See? Okay. All right. You see? the duality in being, right? Okay. And everything is two. There's also a term that they call a fractal. It's a fractal reality. What that means is a fractal is when you take a small chunk out of something and that small chunk looks exactly identical to the large portion, the larger portion that you pulled it from. You follow what I'm saying? Okay, so you see like being is duality is dualized. And then there's another dualization inside the duality on both ends. You got nine energy and nine matter, which is consciousness and will. On the other half, you got energy and matter. You follow what I'm saying? Energy and matter are kind of the same thing, just they vary on degrees, like the brother was saying, right? So this 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 dualization, right? This is what the as far as like active and inactive. Uh, passive and aggressive, masculine and feminine, right? This is what the Chinese call this uh, yin and yang, right? The comedic version of this is called and technique. Corresponds to the masculine, positive, active, yang thing. Right. Yin is the negative, magnetic, feminine thing. Corresponds to Chef Lu. Right. Chu is outgoing. Chef Lu is receptive. You follow me? So. I thought, okay, there's some of y'all, I know some of y'all in here that are up on game as far as the committed culture. Like, I know some of y'all probably have read that Sue is the air guy and Seth New is the water guy. Well, I'll show y'all something. In the Bible, it also gives you a demonstration of this same type of duality. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God created it. The earth was null and void. So, what kind of earth is this if it's null and void? Earth and heaven and fire and water. You follow what I'm saying? Earth versus water, fire and air versus earth and water are nothing but concrete examples 
of abstract thought. It's meant to, de it's designed to help capture the nature of the duality. Like uh, air will rise. Air fills up the room by rising. It's a positive, it's a forceful uh, element, right? Water is a passive element. It would fall down if it was raining, right? And fill up the room. So when we talk about two with the air guy, we're talking about Tev not is Tev Newt is the water god. It's just an explanation. And let me I'm gonna say something about that too. Uh this is going down the road. And ancient Kemet, right? There were we had one word, okay, in English, right? We have one word that stands for two ideas, that word being God. And one aspect we say God is the supreme being, right? And the other aspect we say, we use that word in kind of like a generic term, like a lesser God, lower God, God with a lowercase g, uh, uh, false God, idol God, you follow what I'm saying? It's two different understandings with that one word. Well, in Kemet, they had one word that was synonymous with supreme being. That word is not nether. Neb air chair. Right? Neb air chair. Neb is Lord. Air equals of and chair is simply put all. The Lord of all, the Nebbet chair is synonymous with what we would call the supreme being in English. In that script, Nebbet chair is, is synonymous with supreme being, right? Um, it's a reason for this, right? The word nature, the committed word nature is where we get the word uh, nature from. It's where the Latin word na, uh, natura, natura comes from. It means to be born, right? It's also where the word neutral comes from. And these, this word right here is not really accurate to say this word is equivalent to God. It's more like an attribute of God. You know what I'm saying? What, what we call in Christianity and Islam and uh, Hinduism and stuff like that, we call those angels. They are synonymous with the natural root. If you notice, all the angels have the last name of El, meaning they're just different aspects of El. They're not different entities. They're just different aspects, different qualities of the supreme being, right? Okay. So... Being is dual, non-matter energy, non-matter, non-energy entity. We call that consciousness, right? <clears throat> this is the self. Why we call consciousness the self? Because consciousness can recognize that it is conscious. Excuse me. You clear, is that, that clear to y'all? Like, welcome out. You conscious? Let me stand up for you. I say, you conscious? Are you aware of the fact that you're conscious? Okay. Oh, uh, you can have a seat, though. Um, the reason why I'm asking that, I know some of y'all might feel like this kind of redundant, but I want y'all, like, we've been trained to approach knowledge a certain way. Like, you got to get it through books and you got to read, you got to get it from definitions that they assign to it. I want y'all to do this and do it on your own. You follow what I'm saying? I want you to do this, what they call empirically, right? So if you think about it, you say you are aware of the fact that you are conscious. When consciousness recognizes that it is conscious, that is called identity, right? So self deals with identity. Because, I mean, let's be honest, if you are not conscious, if you cease to be conscious, you will cease to be. 
right? That word being, is that being, that, that's a noun or a verb? Thank you. It's a verb, being, you're what? The soul action, right? But if you cease to be conscious, if this part of you ceases to be conscious, you will cease to be, even though you have a body, right? The body will not respond if there is no consciousness. If, it, if it's not aware of anything, doesn't know how to respond, it don't, rec don't recognize anything, it cannot will itself to respond, right? Consciousness, when it identifies itself as consciousness, it is identity. It's what the Greeks call ego, right? If you notice, I decline to use the favorite word that they use is subconscious and conscious. But if you really study psychology, you will understand that there is really no such thing as what they call a subconscious mind. I mean, we tag that word to identify what's going on outside of our uh, ability to control it. Like our inv involuntary functions in our body, we call that subconscious. But the word sub means below or beneath consciousness, consciousness being awareness. Well, how can it be beneath the awareness if that involuntary part of us knows how to digest my food without me willing it. I don't have to try to digest my food. It knows how to do it on its own. It recognizes the time when it's time for me to, you know, keep my heart on rhythm. I don't have to do that. It knows how to do it. It knows when to put me to sleep. You follow what I'm saying? So there's no such thing as the subconscious mind. There's consciousness and there's will, right? Now, the energy matter part of being, right? We just talked about, let's go over it real quick. You got the supreme being, you got human being. Both are dual, individuals, right? One side of the individual entity is non-energy, non-matter, we call that consciousness. The other side of the individual being is called energy and matter. This energy and matter right here is spirit. I know that's an assumption for some of y'all right now, but the energy matter part of being is what our ancestors referred to as what we call now the spirit. Uh, anybody got a smartphone with a Bible verse on it? Or with a Bible on it? I need the very first verse in Genesis. Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. I don't want y'all to just say I'm making this up. I want to show y'all that in the beginning. Come on with it. I mean, how many y'all? I mean, you ain't got to be the same. If you know it, then say it. God created the heavens and the earth. And what else? And the Spirit of God hovered over the water. Right? Look at what that verse said. That, God, that verse didn't say God was a spirit. That verse said the Spirit of God. Here is God, here is God's spirit. That's a duality. Hovering over the water. That means it's moving. Energy is movement, right? It's the, the Hebrews call it the Ruach of Elohim, right? Hovering over the water, the Tohu and Bohu, right? Okay. And Kemet, right? This spirit is called Ra. Rock. And the self and Kemet, like before, before, <clears throat> excuse me, before consciousness manifests itself in the world, and Kemet, it is called, I mean, can y'all see that? So the self and Kemet is called Amen. So when you hear people talk about Amen Ra, the sun god, I know about it now. They ain't not got nothing to do with the sun. Let's talk about consciousness and the spirit, right? But this name, Amen, is not really, it's not necessarily a, a, a name per, per se. It's not a proper noun. It's like an adjective that's been used as a noun. Like, it's a word, an adjective noun, if you will. It's a word that they assign to something. But that word was more descriptive of the attribute of the thing. What's the name? 
Oh, you can just save the man. Okay. Alright, peace. Let's say Keisha um can turn herself red or turn herself invisible. Right? You turn yourself invisible. And you, you don't ever turn yourself back yet, right? You're the only person on the planet that can that be capable of being invisible. So instead of calling you Keisha now, we just call you invisible. We call you by your attributes, right? But I'm saying, like, if we, if everybody knew that you were capable of it, right? They knew you existed, but they knew you were also capable of being invisible. So instead of just calling you invisible people, they just saying in, invisible in the building. What's going on, invisible? You know, we know you're here because, you know, you're talking with us, but we just can't see you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel what you feel? So, I'm in, it's the, it's the same principle as invisible. I'm in means hidden. All right. They said any, that, that non energy matter consciousness being inside of being was hidden because it is not a material. It, it's non energy. It's a void. It can't be filled. Everybody in here tell me what it looks like, what it feels like. like the whole point of spirituality is for you to experience the fact that you are not conscious, but you are consciousness itself. You are that which is aware, right? So what I was saying about that is, uh, now how many how many people, like, give y'all example. How many people been in a conversation? Y'all talking about something, you trying to remember an artist's name, or you trying to remember the, what what happened when Auburn did the, the kick six. So you trying to remember something that you know is a fact, but you cannot think of the fact. We can't you got it on the tip of your tongue, but you can't articulate it, right? Or how many times have you? Uh, well, let's just go with that. I'll go with that, right? That means that. This being that is aware of the thoughts is not responsible for manifesting the thought. So that means that thought and mind is in the energy matter part of being. When you hear people say things like the conscious mind, the mind is not conscious. You are conscious of what's going on in the mind, right? The mind is that which generates thought. What we just saw, like we, some, we cannot generate thoughts. We can't will it. We just witness the thought, right? That is the entire point of meditation, to get you to see, like I'm saying, is you are that which is time. Y'all seen Erica Badu? Y'all know she recently came out and exposed her gray hair, right? Y'all heard the quote she said. She said, uh, my body has aged, my hair is gray, my brain is aged. But that part of me that has watched all of this has not a. We are that which is watched, right? So, another name for Amen, right? Can y'all see that? Atum. Matter of fact, before it was called Amen, it was called Atum in the act. In the Anu tradition of Kemet, see, Kemet had a uh, university temple complex, like how we got uh, UAB, and then uh, what's another? Uh, we got uh, BYU Brigham Young, you know, that's for all religious schools, and then we got uh, Marymount, and then we got Brown or Xavier, you know what I'm saying? They were a combination. So when you went to the temple of Anu. It was like going to Cambridge combined with Brigham Young. It was a university temple complex. Everything happened at the temple. The barbershop was in there, the church was in there, the school was in there. Everybody went to school together at the temple. And this is where you went to learn about Atum. The reason why they changed the name to Amen is because later on down the line, when you said the Kemet, you said the dynasty, they amalgamated everything. I told you, but it's still the same. I told 
is another adjective noun. It means that which is complete. It cannot be altered. It can't be felt. It is immutable. It's perfect just one way. You follow what I'm saying? That is now why we say amen at the end of our prayer. Because the, the prayer is complete. It's done. I'm in a tomb of synonymous. Matter of fact, uh, Democritus, Greek philosopher, right? He was traveling and came and studied in Kenya. And he went to Anu University, right? And he learned about the Atum. And he went back to Greece, right? He said, uh, behind everything in life is the atom. It's the atom. Well, it's the primordial. Everything in life exists behind because of this. It it's the primordial way of being for everything, right? So they said, uh, tell me some more about the atom. The democracy was like, uh, you take something like a grain of sand and just bust it open and split it and split it and split it. You'll get to a point where you can't split it no more. He had to tell, describe a non energy matter entity physically because, like, the Greeks could not wrap their mind around something that existed but could not be acted on. Right? They could not understand the concept of the non energy, non matter consciousness. Right? So he had to describe a material version of it. That's where we get the atom from now. But, so. This square represents your body, energy map. The circle inside the square represents your consciousness, right? When the consciousness that is called Atom, right? Never tell, or whatever, right? Before the, the, the real name of them, I'm sorry, let me back up. The real name of this country is right, the invisible. You're the invisible. But what's your real name? Keisha. In the scripture, it's a book out called uh, Knowing the Transformations of Ra and Overcoming Evil of Hell. It's one of the ancient comedic scriptures that was taught and taught out of at the temple complex of Anu, right? Right. There's a version that it says, my name is Asari, right? My name is Asari, or what the Greeks call Osiris. Right. That is the unmanifested true name of consciousness in the comedic text, right? When it comes to joy, when, when God's self, that's God's self before it manifests, that's God's consciousness, that's God's identity. When it comes to manifest and dwell in man's spirit, they drop the ES and call it a soul. So God's self the consciousness of God dwelling in man in the a new comedic tradition system is called assault, right? Mm -hmm. They are all the same, it's just different titles, different aspects. Nebuchadnezzar is the word that encapsulates all of God being the non existent side, the non energy matter side, rather, and the energy matter side, right? That's the all encompassing supreme individual being. That's the title for that, right? That's just how they broke it down. It's a point that I'm, I'm, I'm getting to. I want y'all to understand, right? But I'm trying to slowly build up to it because I want, I want y'all to get it. It's gonna be an exercise that I want y'all to do based on. It, right? Yeah, that, that's basically it. But I want y'all to understand that there's a the reason why they say man is made in God's image is because 
we are the same qualitatively, but not the same. We that the qualitative measure is called assault. The reason why it's not called never chair is because that will put us on the same quantitative level as God, because God is also all energy and all matter. We are not all energy and all matter. Right? It's like a drop of water out of the ocean compared to the ocean. Like that water has the same qualities as the ocean, but you can't sail a ship in some water. Right? Like you need to unite that drop back with the ocean. That that reuniting, matter of fact, is what the baseline establishes the baseline in religion. The reuniting of the drop of water. The consciousness part that says I am. And you reunite that with never chill, the supreme being. That process of reuniting is where the word religion simply comes from. There are different types of religion that have different methods that aim at or claim to aim at getting you back in touch with the most high, or whatever we want to call it. But tease down, right? So, um, excuse me. This this spirit right here is it, it's a composite word. It's made up of uh, what we call the divine spirit. That's where all the laws are, are in your your spiritual gifts, right? And we also have the mind and the physical body, the part that you bump up against and scratch and feed. And that part of you that breathes, that's the physical body. And we also have the animal. Right? These are the this is what makes up your spirit your spirit is a composite entity like you exist in your physical body but these other bodies that you exist in as well because consciousness is infused in the spirit it's part of it it's a part of it but it's also separate because it's individual right so when we talk about the animal spirit we talk about that part of energy matter that makes energy matter move what is energy matter? That's when they say, uh, in John, it says, God, in the beginning, there was the word, and God was the word, or something to that effect, right? And Kemet, remember, Chair, also uses the word to create. And the part in there that says, uh, many were the things that came from my mouth. I... God one became God three. That is from myself, two emanations come out, Tefnu and Shu, right? So it's not to create two different beings, it's creating two different aspects of itself, two modifications of its being, in its being, right? So we get energy and matter, non-energy matter, right? Y'all follow? Okay. When we talk about practicing spirituality, But what's your I say that's what's up. <laughs> what is the def what do you think spirituality is? What's your take on spirituality? I say that's a good answer. That's a good answer. So when we talk about spirituality, some of the tenets in African spirituality is First of all, if you see the creator spoke his existence and it spoke his own name, it named itself. Part of that it says, I told you, it says, my name is Asar. It also says my name is Heka, H-E-K-A. -E Heka is what the Hindus call a mantra. It's a, really a word of power. Like, if that's a baseline tenet in African comedic teachings your name ought to be a word of power if you 
don't know what your name means or your name is just not a word of power, you losing power points. Like, you follow what I'm saying? Okay, so I can give you the brother stand up. Well, you can't stand up. I got, I got you. What's your name, man? A.V. Ashante Shabazz. When you hear A.V. Ashante Shabazz, that is a word of power. That lets you know that he has some type of spiritual connection. Whatever. Ashante is an African tribe. Right? But I'm going to let you go. In. Why did you join? What, what, what was your name at first? Was that your birth name? What made you change your name from Avery Richardson to Avery Asante? A V Asante is a bad. I said. Mm -hmm. I said. Right. I say, I say, I say, I say, y'all get that around applause. Your name ought to be a word of power. If it's not, you lose the power from it. Actually, uh, all words have power. I mean, the assembling of letters into words is called spelling, right? Words literally, literally cast spells because they determine our thought process. Our words have power. If I hook some of y'all up to a, a lie detector test or EKG machine or whatever to measure your vitals, and I yelled out something like, uh, stupid, fire, something that gets you tense, the vital signs will drop. Blood pressure drop, I mean, go up. You know, your body go into what they call fight or flight mode. The reason why it does that is because that those feelings of anger and fear and sadness and, you know, just not, not lack of motivation or whatever, are non-essential qualities of man. For example, like uh, the Chinese have a practice called Qigong, right? Qigong... The word chi is what they call the energy in your body, right? That life force is synonymous with rock, right? Gong means cultivation. Energy, life, energy, cultivation, right? They don't have a word for fear in that practice, you know. They say that is a deviation in your liver, gallbladder, energy meridian system. See, the... This physical body, this is where the chakras are, right? Here is where the, the laws that control the chakras. But the chakras are not that etheric ball of energy that rests on your spine and stuff like that. You hear? Your chakras are your energy points in your body. The organs, what we call organs, right? They are five pairs of organs when they converge, when that energy system converge, that is what makes a chakra. The five pairs are the liver, like I said, the liver and the gallbladder, uh, the lungs and the large intestine, the heart and the small intestine, the stomach has the spleen as a partner, and the kidneys have the gallbladder, right? Those five organ pairs plus the pineal gland and the pituitary gland make up the seven chakras. How many of y'all are familiar with chakras? I should have that in the beginning, right? Okay. We'll say that for another day. All right. So when we talk about spirituality, the major aspect of spirituality that we neglect, that we don't think about, that we don't associate with because our capture separated church from state. When they did that, they separated spirit from energy and matter. So when we talk about practice of spirituality, we talk about cultivating our energy. Um, that energy starts off with the air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat, right? 
when you ingest it, it's then guided by what they call growth hormone. Growth hormones are just intelligent cells in your body that guide the energy to help promote your, your vitality, right? If you're not eating right to feed that, to circulate that energy, you can't say you practice in spirituality. You follow what I'm saying? You can't say things like I'm um, spiritual and non-religious. Look at the word spiritual. A large part of another part of spirituality, right? Is breathing. Spirit literally means breath. The word spirit literally means breathing ritual. Because if you notice, when you're animated, when you're angry and upset and tense, or when you watch somebody expressing those frailties, right? Pay attention to how breathe, how they breathe, how rapid. They heartbeat and how you can been there before, you know what I'm saying? When you're ready to turn up, your breathing rate is up. When you calm and stress free and at peace, the breathing rate is moderate, it's slow. You know what I'm saying? So that tells you that should make a connection. It's your breathing rate and your thoughts are one and the same. So if you're not doing anything to bring about a calmness and a quietness to steal your thoughts, to recognize that this part of your being is not you. This is the not self. You have to raise your awareness to this part of your being instead of identifying with this. So instead of saying things like, I'm tired or I'm afraid, this is I. There's no energy and matter in it. There's no motion in it. The word emotion, emotion, motion. You got to move. It's moving. So when you feel those things, you have to do exercises to move those energies out. Like the Chinese and Qigong, they have figured out certain emotions are stored in our organs. Like when we're grieving for something, right? The Chinese have figured out they have herbs and certain exercises, certain sounds you can make to move that energy out of your lungs, because that's what grief is stored. Yes. Yes. They give you certain exercises like, okay, to move that energy, they give you a sound and an exercise to make out of your lungs. You do that about 50 times. Eat some herbs like uh, a stragglers, right? You're back to yourself. But <laughs> you, you on? You on? Yeah, that's that's the truth. You anything? Go ahead. Go ahead. You got something to say about it? Okay. Okay. I said. I said. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to give it away, huh? We gave it a snippet. Like, that's it. This was the call, huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. But that's just to show you that a vibration, that's what the word is. Gives you new meaning to what the word is. When they say God spoke everything into existence, what's the word? Energy and matter. See, sound is our handle on energy and matter. That's that's what makes us like God also. There's a, uh, in South Africa, they got a tribe called uh, the Bantu people. How many of y'all heard of the Bantu people, right? The Bantu people got four classifications for everything in creation and existence. It's called Muntu, Kintu, Hantu, and Kuntu, right? Right now, want to can to and to and Kuntu. Kuntu and Hantu. 
what they call time and space. Let's have to. Kuntu is the different uh, modalities of being, the different transformations of energy, right? What they call relativity. Right. Uh, before Einstein had E equals M C squared, the Bantu people had Kantu. I mean Kentu. It's the category that they put energy and matter in. This was before Einstein. Matter of fact, some priests went to visit the people and they laughed at them because you know. They were saying they had it out in their mind that energy and matter were two different things. But in African spirituality, especially the Bantu people, Kentu is a, a category for energy and matter. I think that's what Einstein got it from. But anyway, look at Muntu. The only two characters classified under Muntu is God and man. And this is under the Bantu religion. Or spirituality or culture or whatever. God and man are the only two entities under the classification Muntu because we use the word the same as God. We speak things into our existence. We we don't say, I'm gonna give you a bottle. What did you make? A bottle. No. I'm gonna make a bottle, go out, get the materials, then I'm gonna make I made the bottle. You follow what I'm saying? We speak it into existence first, then we, we manipulate the energy and matter. The brothers in uh, Islam, especially the five percent nation, they have a saying called "I stimulate life and matter." I S L A M Islam, right? All right. How do you stimulate life and matter? With the word sound. Man is capable of making any sound on the planet, right? Can sound be converted into light energy? All right. See, the thing about energy is energy has different modalities and different like wave frequencies and in its bandwidth or whatever. It has different ways of existence. Energy waves, I rather say. The the wave that man can manipulate the best is sound, right? So when we manip when we stimulate life and matter with sound, that is being that is in our that we're acting in our godhood. What are we? Whatever we are speaking and thinking is going to determine our action and it's going to determine what we get in life, right? So in Kemet, they had uh, the mystery system, right? That one of the final stages in the mystery system or the knowledge of self, right? One of the processes was called. Uh, the judgment scene, where you had the wing of the heart versus the feather of uh, what they call my eye, right? How I many y'all familiar with my eye? My eye is the comedic description of truth, justice, righteousness, balance, reciprocity. You follow what I'm saying? All that was symbolized in the word and the netaret, a netaret, my eye, right? So, so that's not a religion. yes, it is a religion. It's not a religion of worshiping, though. It's it's a religion of cultivation. Like the teachers of uh, ancient Kemet aren't aimed at worshiping any deity. It's aimed at understanding that those deities are talents within our being. Like if we look at the word talent and latent we all know what latent means right it means something slumbering around is inactive you spell talent and latent with the same letters like you spell silent and listen with the same letters you spell talent and latent with the same letters in other words like how we say okay in the conscious community right when you run across somebody who just don't ain't no wrong game what we call it? They sleep. 
right? <laughs> they they mentally dead, spiritually dead, right? They sleep. Matter of fact, in the Hindu tradition, they say awakening the practicing mantra, right? Going in the trance with the words. They compare that the mantras and the deities are one and the same in the Hindu religion. So they say waking up the mantras is similar to shaking, awaking, or sleeping person. You have to vibrate them enough until that energy in them gets to move, until they wake up, until they recognize something, to that deity, to you recognize that that deity is one of your talents. So that's the thing about knowledge itself. And it's supposed to be the thing about going to church every Sunday and to the mosque and to the temple on Saturday and Shabbat, Shabbat or whatever we want to call it. You know what I'm saying? The goal is to identify the quality in your being that will let you know who you are and will help identify the faculties that you need to activate so that you can be productive and successful in life. That's the goal of it. Is that clear to y'all? Like, if that's not clear, then what are you pursuing with spirituality? I had a brother tell me, and it's no disrespect, but the brother told me that this physical existence was training for this existence when we go, when we leave this physical body. If that was the point, then why would God have given us a physical body to exist in? Why would God make energy matter? See, this part of God, as well as us, is infinite. It is limitless, right? So, do you think you can experience yourself if, if you don't have any boundaries and you know yourself? All right? We know what we're capable of because we know what we're incapable of. We have boundaries. Well, God, knowing all because it's infinite, knew that it could not experience itself if it didn't limit itself, so to speak. Give itself something to exist in. You got to look at the word existence. X is outside, right? Tell y'all what. Let's do Let's try something. We're going to do a little meditation exercise right quick, and then we'll be ready to close it out, right? I hope I ain't bored out for you, but, <laughs> but uh, close your eyes. So, this is just, I'm going to just show y'all what meditation is. You don't have to participate. You can do it if you want to, right? Without moving your mouth, keep your mouth closed. Say to yourself, I am. On the count of three, we're going to say to ourselves, I am. One, two, three. No, don't make a sound. <laughs> Silently. I should have said that. Silently. <laughs> Say it to yourself. Silently. Mute it. No, shut this down. <laughs> All right. And say it with your mind. Right? <laughs> All right. So we're going to count to three. We're going to say, I am to ourselves silently. Right? <laughs> One, y'all know what I'm saying. Those of y'all who know me, y'all know I love to laugh, man. Don't get me started, bro. One, two, three. Right? Raise your hand if you say it I am. Okay. What voice, you put your hand down. What voice said I am? Consciously, right? Because your body didn't say it. Nothing passed through your ears for you to hear, but you heard yourself say I am, right? That's what recognizing consciousness is all about. It's the understanding that you are not the physical body. You are consciousness itself because you spoke without using your physical mouth. You heard without using ear. Right? Do it one more time. Hold oh, that. Picture yourself. What are you going to do when you leave here? Can you picture yourself doing it? Can you picture yourself getting in the car? 
<laughs> so ready. We finna be over with you. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We finna go. I'm finna get you out of here. Invisible. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but um, yeah. Whatever you pick. <laughs> Whatever you pictured yourself doing, right? Ask yourself, what, because you haven't done it, right? What kind of sight sees the future? Like you saw yourself doing something and you haven't done it yet. It's a function of awareness, right? It's consciousness. It gives new meaning to our senses. See, when this part, see, it's, it, this part operates in cycles. Everything is cyclic in this part of being. So when this cycle runs out, when it runs its course, you're not going to have anything left out of this part of being, but you will still have those senses. And that's what you take with you when you transition. So that's why in the beginning we recognize our ancestors because the energy is still here. It's just not in form. See, we're consciousness in the physical form. The physical form wears out, the rotation of the cycle wears out, but the energy dissipates, it doesn't go anywhere. Of course. Of course. I think as far as like a physical existence, as far as like reincarnating back into another human, not necessarily. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, it's still in the crystal box. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, See, they will tell you that, right? Well, see, the object of this society is to keep you under intense pressure. I mean, it, it, it keeps us stupid. When you, your body's in fight or flight mode, your blood is pumping to your extremities. You're ready to fight or flight. Run from it, right? If you are constantly in that mode, that mind frame, and that's all stress does, whatever it is, if you're sad, if you're angry all the time, if you're fearful all the time, if you're worried about something, thinking, 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 and can't come up with a solution all the time, that's your body's in the same mode, fight or flight. It's ready to fight or flight. Your blood is not circulating around your internal organs, your vital area. You can't digest your food. You know what I'm saying? You can't, your liver can't produce metabolites or whatever. You can't function right because you are under intense stress all the time in this society. And then it's a very ignorant group of people in control of this society right i mean i'm saying ignorant just to be nice but more suited <laughs> but right now they did i say they ignorant right so the whole reason for keeping us under stress is to keep us separated from our divinity right we keep this part active and distracted so we can't focus our consciousness on what we truly are so we can make this part of our being better you know what I'm saying? We can't grow when we consciously stressed out one more thing i'm gonna wrap it up i say i say that's that's that vibe so i'm serious that's where i was going to the motion that vibration that brother spoke of an ascension he's talking about is what the Gnostic Christians call Christ consciousness. And Kemet, we call them God men. We would translate them as the God men or God women. We call them a saw. So if you ever hear anybody like a brother was telling me not too long ago that they found the tomb of a saw. They didn't find the actual being a saw. They found a man who had achieved a saw level of consciousness, Christ consciousness. And he had reached that title of the song. See, the whole thing about reaching that energy, 
uh, what they call increasing your vibrations or whatever, achieving Christ consciousness, the soft consciousness. You have to program your words. You have to program your words that program your thoughts and actions, right? So in Kemet, they had a, a, a title called Ma'akaru. Ma'akaru. It means true of voice. True of voice is a phrase that you would say when what you say about life and what's going on in life, and what about your nature. If every thought and word that you have is true, that is the empowerment of your word. That will, you are granted the title of Mahakaru. But that was something that you had to practice. You had to, it's a technology, so to speak, because your words keep reinforcing programs. That's why they have to bombard us with all this stuff that they put in the music. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know all too well how the music in turn transitions or whatever. <laughs> that we in. Okay. You ever been in church and you heard my pastor used to say, "Govern yourself accordingly." Right? And govern is means control how you act. Right? So when we talk about the government word literally means governing mentality. So what our ancestors, they had This is what we call the, the tree of life. It's just a simplified version of it, right? It represents the different divisions of our spirit, right? Our ancestors, when we took those people who wanted to be into government or who wanted to be in a position of uh, any type of authority, whether pastor, teacher, congressman, or whatever we call it, they went through the initiation stages to raise their consciousness to the second tier of the spirit. And what all that means is this part of your being is the animal spirit. It's controlled by your emotions, your wants and dislikes. So anybody who is governed by wanting something or not wanting something can't govern over anybody else because they're going to always put their wants and needs over yours, right? So in order to see the thing about government is it's supposed to recognize the wants and needs of the individual and the group and coordinate as follows, as, as, as according, right? Right now, all our government does is set up traps. We're not traps. They support the disadvantages that we have and it supports the advantages of the economic climate, right? So by that mean, what I'm saying, government I, economics go hand in hand. Economics will determine the policy. So the thing about raising your consciousness from not being controlled by your emotions and your left brain and your right brain, because they're separate, you're now combining things. You understand how to combine things. You understand that the economy should not be based on allowing the people Put it like this. We're in a capitalistic society, right? Yeah, this conversation, right? Capitalism allows for greed. It allows for what we have today is a few small people in control of the majority of the wealth on the planet. Our ancestors had a system that people who had proven to elevate their consciousness to the second tier of the spirit, what they call God man and God woman, right? Understood that. Let's say you had more of a responsibility in society to, than this was to be. Well, they had means of accommodating you for that. Whatever your spiritual and cultural responsibility was in society, you were recompensated for that. So if I'm not pulling my weight, 
if I'm like the CEO of a company and all I do is just have my name on the company, but I got other workers who work harder than me, according to our ancestors, government and way of life, I wouldn't make as much as the harder workers. Right? That's fair, right? And today they call that socialism, right? Some like communism, but you got to look at the words in themselves are not inherently negative or positive. It's the people that run that type of system that make it negative or make it positive. You feel what I'm saying? If we can, if we had people who had integrity, see, this part of the spirit is all about being in. It's all about integrity, right? If you can stay true to yourself. Because you are true of your word, my Akeru, you understand that men are alike. We are one and the same. And you understand that man and nature have a connection too, right? So you want to put people in this position to be recompensated for whatever they're doing. That's just basically it in a nutshell. If we had people to raise our consciousness to, their, to this level of the spirit, to be, you follow what I'm saying, trustworthy of the power that comes with being in the position of a president or a councilman or a senator or whatever, judge, a teacher, you follow what I'm saying? We would not be in this situation we're in today. We got Governors, or what's the guy's name who got caught with his wife and lied and said he was on the feet for cheating on his wife? You know what I'm saying? Those people like that couldn't have a seat in, in ancient Kenya. They had nowhere in ancient Africa. You know what I'm saying? Like this madness that we got with our sewer debt. You see what I'm saying? We ain't responsible for the debt, but yet we got to pay it off because the people who are in power have their wants and needs over prioritized, more prioritized than ours. But we the reason why they're in there, so to speak, on the surface, right? You mean each point or just the different teams? Okay. okay. This part of the spirit, the lower side. We call that Sahu. Sahu is governed by the animal big part of the being. So we call this portion of the spirit people who operate on this level and can and commit, they will call Sahu men. Right? Yeah. And some other thing. Likes, dislikes. Uh exactly. You got to think about emotion. The, the, the emotions stem from the only two forces in the universe, which is electricity and magnetism, that push and pull, like this, like I'm going to do this because I want to do it. I'm going to not do this because I don't want to do it. It's the same thing. Everything is mental, right? So electricity expresses itself as weird. Magnetism expresses itself as consciousness and our being, right? When it comes to this part of our being, it expresses itself as push or pull. I'm going to pull myself toward this. I'm going to push myself away from it. See what I'm saying? Uh, this part of the spirit is called the body, right? That is all about, like I say, integrity. Make a long story short. It's all about knowing the truth and knowing how to resist the animal. And this part of your spirit is what is done. Everything, this part of the spirit, the first and second tier, is dominated by what's underneath, the foundation, right? The sixth dominates the bar part of the spirit. The sixth part is will. You now have the divine will. You united your will with God's will, moving in the same direction that God is. Right, no longer responding by the, uh, responding to your wants and desires. And this part, exactly, the top. This is what they call uh, God, man, and God, woman. When you 
have reached this part of the sphere. A lot of people have documented evidence in ancient Kemet, in ancient uh, India, back when it was Indus Kush, when it was started by the blacks who left Africa or whatever. They've reached this, this point of the sphere. This is when you united yourself, when you become what they call an Asar man, right? Or God conscious. You know yourself. You can identify yourself. You have the ability to see the unity in all things. And you can dominate all matter and reality with just your will and knowing how to. Because it helps you to understand that going back to this word right here, netter, neutral, how you deal with certain things, is, uh, it's not an event that is upsetting in itself. It's your reaction to the event. So once you understand that that aspect of you can't get mad or, or is rejecting getting angry or something, then you understand that before you reach this level, you see something, you encounter something, and you get angry at it, right? If you reach that part of your spirit and understand that this, this is what's upsetting me, it ain't going to upset you. So the thing is not upsetting itself. It's just your reaction. This is sad to me, might not be sad to you, or it might not be sad tomorrow. So the thing is not an upset, sad. It helps you to deal with things better because you're aware that Whatever emotion that I'm feeling is temporary because emotions are what? Cyclical. The cycles run out. So it helps you stay neutral so you can focus so you won't get your blood pressure up about things. You, it helps you stay neutral so you can grow. The, the blood is not in fight or flight mode. You are in growth mode. Amen. No, it's not being okay with it. It's not responding. It's not responding haste out of haste because you feel the need to, your emotions lead you to tear you out to do something that might not necessarily be the correct answer for that. It's more like it's more like about white. Okay, we, what we the real issue here is this just be real. What we call the illusion of white supremacy, right? That's the major problem that us as black people face, right? How does that help us with that, right? Okay, good. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, you want here. Oh. Gotcha. <laughs>
Exactly. Give you an example why uh, the real reason why it's important. Hmm. Exactly. E exactly. Exactly. That's it. One quick example about why that's important, and I'm gonna let y'all go. When we experience something that paralyzes our, our thought, we that this animal part, this animal um, animating part of our being that's responsible for moving the thought process because that's what thinking is the term emotion right? when we go in the shop that part of us is paralyzed so our thinking shuts down you can't do anything that's the neutrality that, that becomes the opiate which i was talking about well okay in Kemet, when Assad died he was mummified by a that process of uh, mummification means when you're animating principle is shocked and you can't think another part of your being kicks in and if it's in tune with the laws it becomes made impervious that's what the mummification is you, you, you change your reaction you train yourself to react a certain way so that when your dominant part of you is shocked the laws kick in and carry you out you have a been afraid so afraid of something and seeing somebody in a panic like somebody just drowning they just flailing they kill themselves because they panic they're not in control of their emotion they need motion movement they're not in control of it. but something kicked in because they still moving around right well when we raise our consciousness to the bar part of the spirit we have what they call been mummified we've been made impervious Meaning that our thoughts and laws have, well, our, our consciousness has shifted to the lawful part of it because the animated principle is shocked. It, it can't move. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? Anytime you want something to cease or move faster, it needs to be charged with emotion. Right? So fear paralyzes you. Love makes this kick in. You don't have love and knowledge of self because love is the highest level of knowledge. You don't have knowledge of self, you will not be in tune with divine laws. So when you are afraid of something, you will not know what to do with pain. All right, that makes sense. So um, I'm going to say this and I'm going to conclude. Uh, the great saying that says, uh, all you need in life is knowledge two things knowledge of self and nothing else. <laughs> y'all was good. Appreciate y'all, man. <laughs> Thank you.